Hi everyone, welcome to episode 11. So uh, today we're going to be sort of um, getting our map generator ready to be implemented into the actual game. So uh, the main challenge of course is going to be getting navigation working. But uh, first of all, I'd like to just add in a new variable to control the size of each of the tiles. So we just open up the map generator script and just add in a public float tile size. And now we can uh, go down to where we're setting the local scale, and simply multiply that by tile size. Um, we're probably also going to want to adjust the, 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 uh, the obstacle size to match that. So let's copy that line and just put it over here by the uh, obstacle instantiation. You can just replace new tile with new obstacle. And uh, of course, we're also going to want to stretch out the spacing between each of the tiles now that they're potentially bigger. Um, so in the code to position method, we can just stretch this out by multiplying the entire thing by tile size as well. And now, uh, once that variable pops up, we can easily increase or decrease the tile size. Okay, so now on to navigation. Uh, Unity currently doesn't allow us to bake a new nav mesh at runtime. So what this means is that we're going to have to have one nav mesh that's sort of the size of the largest map that we might want to generate. And then uh, for any smaller maps, we just sort of uh, mask out uh, the, the bits that we don't want. So we're going to need to create a sort of invisible floor plane. So I'm going to create a new quad and I'll just uh, maybe call this my nav mesh floor. And we can remove the mesh collider because the, the nav mesh only uses the mesh itself. And we can rotate that. Uh, let me just reset the transform first to position that at the center. And then can rotate it 90 degrees and scale that out. And now uh, we don't actually want to be able to see this, this plane. So we can't disable the mesh renderer because then I believe the navigation won't work. So we can just uh, maybe turn this to shadows only and then we can't see it. Um, so let's try this out. We can set that to navigation static and hit bake. So now we've got a, a little nav mesh to work with. Um, I, want to, I want to be able to control the size of this sort of floor from within my, uh, my map generator script. So I'm going to create a variable for that. Uh, let's put it over somewhere here. Um, public transform, we can call that the map floor here as well, um, or rather the nav mesh floor. And then can have another map size, but this represents the maximum map size. And then maybe just at the bottom of our generate map method, we can say that the that the nav mesh floor has got a local scale equal to um, to a new vector three. For the x-axis, we'll have the max map size dot x, and now. Because it's rotated 90 degrees, uh, what we'd usually think of as its z-axis is now its y-axis. So we'll put here nav mesh floor dot y for the y-axis, and then we can just multiply that by tile size. All right. Um, oh, that that actually is meant to be max map size. Okay. So save, and once we once we assign this variable over here. Let me just clear that console warning or error. And uh, now we are able to adjust our maximum map size over here. And you can see the, I don't know if you can see in the video, let me just turn this back on. We are able to adjust the size of that over here nicely. Um, of course, every time that you adjust the maximum map size or fiddle with the tile size variable, uh, you are going to have to manually come over here and just rebake the nav mesh. Okay, let me make this invisible again, like so. And uh, what we want to do now, first of all, is uh, get the obstacles um, masking out of the nav mesh so that the our pathfinding units, our enemies, won't be able to walk through them. So let's go on to the obstacle prefab and we can just simply add a nav mesh obstacle to this. And we just want to select the carve so that it's actually dynamically carving out of the nav mesh. 
And already that should work if we just go into our map object so that it regenerates. Um, and we go into navigation, you can see it's, it's carving it out of the mesh. So we basically want to do the same thing for these edges so that enemies can't sort of decide to take a shortcut around an obstacle and actually walk off the map. So we'll want to create an empty game object that has got a nav mesh obstacle, which is also going to be set to carve. And uh, we can maybe just call this something like the uh, nav mesh mask, perhaps. And we can assign that as a prefab as well. So basically what we want to do is to each of the sides, just uh, add something like this that's masked out of the navigation map. Um, but we want to do that dynamically in our script, of course, so that it adjusts based on the, on the size of the map. So let's go back into our map generator and let's create a new public transform variable up here to store our nav mesh mask prefab. Okay. And let's delete this from the scene. And just drag it in as a prefab over there. Okay, so uh, even for these pretty simple calculations, I often find it helpful to just pull out a piece of paper. So uh, let's say that our maximum map size on the x-axis is, uh, you can call that m, let's say that's equal to 10. So the left edge will be negative five and the right edge will be positive five, since it's positioned at the center zero. So then let's say we've got our actual map size on the x-axis over here, you can call that x and say that's equal to four. So the left edge will be negative two, the right edge will be positive two. So what we're trying to find is this sort of point over here, halfway between the, the actual edge of the map and the edge of the maximum map size so that we can create this sort of mask area over here to mask out the bit of the nav mesh that we're not going to use. So to find that point, uh, we can just, first of all, sort of get to the uh, right edge of our actual map over here, just by saying, okay, that's equal to x over two. Um, then we want to add half the distance of uh, this, this distance over here to get the midpoint so this distance would be equal to our maximum map size minus the actual map size divided by two, and then we want to divide by two again. So that's equal to maximum map size minus our actual map size divided by two divided by two, which is of course the same thing as dividing by four. So we can say this is equal to two x plus m minus x all over four, of course, if we uh, subtract the x, is the same thing as just x plus m over 4. So we've now got an easy way of finding that point over there. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom of the generate map method, and uh, we're going to want to instantiate a nav mesh mask for uh, each of the sides of the map. So let's start with the left side. Um, we can say transform mask left. Is equal to instantiate. We'll instantiate our nav mesh mask prefab. So for the position, as we just calculated, that will be the actual map size, map size dot x, plus the uh, plus the max map size, max map size dot x, and we want to divide that all by four. So let's put that in brackets. Divide by four. And then of course, we're also going to want to multiply by the tile size so that it takes that into account. Then for rotation, just uh, quaternion.identity, no rotation. And we can say as transform. Okay, now of course, this is just a float over here. We actually need to uh, turn that into a vector three position. So since this is the left side, we can just say vector three dot left and multiply it by all of that. Okay, so that should spawn it in. Now uh, we want to say mask left dot, uh, dot parent is equal to our map holder to keep things nicely organized. And then we want to set the size so that it actually fills up that whole 
region that it's supposed to be masking. So we can say mask left dot uh, local scale is equal to a new vector three. So for the x uh, for the x-axis, that will be just the distance uh, between the uh, the edge of the actual map and the edge of the the edge of the maximum map size. So we can say we'll just open bracket and say max map size dot x minus the actual map size dot x and divide that by two. Okay, we can just say one on the y-axis. And then for the z, we can just maybe set that to the height of our actual map. So we can say map size dot y. And we want to multiply that all by uh, by tile size, as always. Okay, so let's save and let's just see that our left mask is working. Okay, so any moment we should see it uh, coming up over here. And it does seem to be functioning perfectly, if you can see the vague outline of the max map size uh, floor. Um, it's, it's lined up perfectly. So let's do the same thing with the right. So we can just copy all of this code, paste it in over here, call this command R rename mask right. Okay, so for the position, we can just change left to right, simple as that. And for the local scale, that's going to be exactly the same. So just to see that uh, working, come over here. Okay, so for the top and bottom, we uh, want to do the same thing, except just we want the size to be the size of the maximum map size so that it masks out this whole top area over here. So let's just uh, paste that code again. Command R, call this mask top. Okay, so instead of vector three dot left, it becomes vector three dot uh, dot forward to move it sort of up on the Z plane. Um, instead of map size dot X, we of course want Y and Y over here as well. So for the local scale, um, across the X, as I was saying, we wanted to mask out that whole area. So max map size dot X. And for map size dot Y, it'll be the same as we're doing here with the uh, with the x axis, it will be the max map size dot y minus the actual map size dot y all divided by two. Okay, let's copy that quickly and call this mask bottom. Instead of vector three dot forward, that becomes vector three dot back, and everything else stays the same. Okay, let's see. One moment, and it seems to have generated nicely. So if we go into our navigation, you can see it's cutting all of that out, so that's nice. Um, and we should be able to change things like our tile size. And uh, if we change, for example, our max map size, that all seems to, uh, to scale nicely. Okay, so that's working pretty nicely, I think. Um, of course, it's a bit of a workaround uh, since we're not able to actually generate these nav meshes at runtime, but uh, it, yeah, it works very well. And uh, so one thing to keep in mind is, as, as you can see over here, um, we've got a bit where it's being cut off. So we could deal with that in two ways. I mean, either we could just uh, either we could just increase the tile size, something like that, and then you can see it joins up nicely. Otherwise, if we want to keep the tile size the same, uh, we could go into the Bake tab of the navigation, and we could just reduce our agent radius by a tiny bit, since this uh, this sort of carve hull, I believe is what it's called, yep, is uh, what's what's defining how much is cut off, and that is controlled by the agent radius. So if we bake this again now, you can see that reduces it. Um, you definitely don't want to set your agent radius too low. In fact, it'll actually give you a error over here uh, because that will increase the um, the calculation time for finding a path. But I mean, just something like 0.45 won't be too chronic or maybe 0.4 if you just want to uh, correct those little, those little uh, cuts, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, so in the next episode, we'll properly integrate this into our game, get our enemies walking around on it. Um, yeah, so until then, cheers.